Welcome to today's edition of Sport SA Daily Diary, where we'll be chatting to long distance and ultra distance runner Jenna Chalinor. Good afternoon, Jenna. Thanks for joining us today on Sport SA Daily Diaries. It's uh, good to catch up with you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for having me. It's an honor to be on your program. How are things going in, in Derbs at the moment uh, during the lockdown? Yeah, all good in our house. It's an airy silence if you have to go out to fetch anything um, from the shops. But otherwise, our house is doing well. We're keeping positive. Um, it's the only mental strategy you can use to get through this time. So, yeah, we we enjoying a bit of family time, doing some fun things, doing a bit of DIY around the house while well, until our stuff ran out <laughs> and doing some training together. So, yeah, we, we're doing fine. Oh, it's, it's nice to be able to do it all as a, a family, and I'm sure the kids are loving having both mom and dad at home 24 hours a day. Well, actually, we're loving having them home because my older two are actually at boarding school now. So um, they're loving being home. My little one is only seven, and she is thinks she's died and gone to heaven having her big sisters home and at her beck and call. So, yeah, we, we are loving that part. So sure, three three uh, girls. Your husband must be a very brave man in the in the house with four girls in total. Or oh, a naughty man in his life, rather. <laughs> with three daughters. <laughs> um, Jenna, how's um, lockdown going in terms of your training? Because um, you know, for an ultra marathon athlete, it's not exactly the easiest thing to to cope with just being able to run around your garden or on the spot. Yeah, it hasn't. It's been fine for me. I've been very blessed because about six months ago, I invested in a treadmill. Um, I don't have many people to train with at my sort of pace. So, in the winter months, it's a bit it's dangerous running early because I run really early in the morning before my kids go to school. Um, so I did invest in a treadmill. And my one running partner used to live in Joburg, but then he came back. So the treadmill kind of got pushed to the side, and I thought, oh, it was probably not a very good buy and maybe I should actually sell it on because I love running on the road and I, I treadmills are not my favorite things um, but now I think I'm going to pay it off in these five weeks <laughs> between yeah. myself my husband and my two children we are running on that thing every day and um, learning to l- enjoy it it's a different kind of running um, mm. it's keeping me sane I was training really hard last week because we still hadn't heard about um, the comrades if the comrades was going to be on the 14th of June but yeah, we've heard about it now. It's been cancelled for the 14th of June and hopefully a new date, um, postponed to a new date. So I've actually now pulled back um, my training. I'm having a very, very light week. Um, just reset, pull back. It's too long to train for the supposed date, which may be in September, October, to be going flat out now because I would actually supposedly meant to be racing to Ocean's Ultra tomorrow. So yes. I, I was... I was pretty much peaking now, <laughs> so I need to pull back and uh, realign the body and yeah. But yeah, we're enjoying the treadmill. I've set up a bit of a gym at home. We've got it used to be my old photographic studio, which I've turned into a bit of a home gym. The Prime, the High Performance Center, were really great and they lent me some things to add to it. So yeah, we're doing fine. We're making the most of the situation. Yeah, I mean, it's a diff- it is a difficult situation for everybody, but particularly at the- athletes at the top of their game guys that were getting ready for the olympics guys that are getting ready for comrades it's not just the the plain sailing of okay well i'm going to start my training at home and uh, again i'll start properly in three months time it's it's a full calendar of of working towards a a goal so i mean it's something easily done no it's really challenging to to be honest um if you think about uh, people training for comrades, for example. So in December, you you on December on holiday, and you're not really doing too much. January comes, uh, you start doing a bit of training. February comes, you're getting more into it. March, you really are big into your training for comrades. It's a big big month, March, April, um, and then you get the race. So even if for me, for two oceans, I train December. Um, January, February, March, supposedly to run my two oceans now in April, and so what gets you through that really long block of training um, is the, the reward, we like to call it, the race. Mm-hmm. So you, you, when the t- time going gets tough, you, you push through the hard parts because you, you know you're getting towards your race. So now we've done that block and poof, the race has just been taken away. And yeah. every 
everywhere you look, another race has been taken away, another one race has been taken away. So your your reward of testing yourself, pushing your limits, seeing if you can get on the podium, seeing if your training has been beneficial, has just been taken away. So it's not going to be lost because you are going to just build on a base you've already built on. It's just hard to get the mind mentally around that to keep going um, because there's no race that you can kind of pin post because there's no races really available. There are some, but will they will they actually happen? You don't know. Yeah. So it's it is really hard for athletes, be it runners, swimmers. So swimmers were, were supposed to be swimming the Olympic trials right now. Um, it's it's really it is a hard time for all athletes. Um, but yeah, the best thing you can do is just work on your strength, the stuff you can do at home, and and try not to be too hysterical about it. I know there's people yeah. running around the gardens like crazy. But I think sanity prevails. Yeah. Like, do the garden running, of course. Do whatever you need to, to be sane. But don't go overboard. I think I think people mm. are going overboard, and they're going to end up on the other side when we can get out, but they're going to be injured. So yeah. I, I don't know. I think everything in moderation, that goes to life. But it is a very difficult time for athletes. No, absolutely. And and actually everybody involved in sports. I've got a lot of photographer um, friends who are sports photographers and their livelihood and everything has also just come to a halt. So it's, it's actually being a difficult time for, for everybody in sport, which is, you know, such a massive industry. Yeah, huge. I know I spoke to um, one of the sport photographers um, yesterday and I actually bought an image from him just to support him and that. But it's tough. It's tough out there. <laughs> one image to support him. But anyway, it is. It's really tough. But it's tough for everyone. I think there's not one single person that is not affected by this. Um, my husband's business, every single person. So no one is alone in this. No yeah. one. It, there's not anyone who's not affected. Everyone is affected in different ways. And that's what um, I kind of hold on to when I'm feeling a bit upset or a bit frustrated. Like, it's not me. It's the whole world. We're yeah. all in this together. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, Jenna, you, um, your running career really took a, a step up um, after you had kids. Um, you, you were obviously running before that, but not to the level that you are now. Um, what made you make the decision to, once you'd sort of had, had your kids, to say, okay, now it's time. I'm actually going to give this horns and give it everything I've got. Um, I think at school I was, um, I definitely ran and I knew I loved it. It was definitely my passion, but I was more of a sporting all-rounder. I loved all sports. So I didn't want to only concentrate on running. I played provincial hockey. I went to World Life Saving Champs um, in 98 when I was 16. And that's, you, that's when I met my husband. I swam for the swimming team. Uh, any sport, you name it, I did it, and I absolutely loved it. Um, I always knew that I was pr pretty good at running. Um, I did obviously all the athletics and cross country that there was, and I pretty much um, did well in my races. Um, and only, uh, and then towards the end of my trick, I was possibly going to go uh, to America on a scholarship, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to make running my life, so I decided to stay in Durban and study. And I did. I studied a BE Foundation Phase degree to become a teacher. Um, and then I, dabbled, I did a normal varsity life thing, which I'm glad I did because it yeah. time to have a second child. So then, uh, yeah, I <laughs> anyway, so I got pretty much um, a lot more involved in it after my second child and I had to beg for four years for my third child so I I was running pretty good times <laughs> pretty well then I had to sign a serviette that I wouldn't ask for another one after the third <laughs> but then and after my third knowing it was my my last child um just kind of like baby's done time to run let's see where I can go with this I was teaching I was doing photography on the side and running and juggling three kids and it just got it got too much um, there was just too many balls in the air, so I decided to pick the one I was most passionate about, being my running. My husband gave me the opportunity to focus everything on my running. Um, he's very supportive and hands-on, um, and that's kind of where it sort of took off. I, I gave my running more attention, and I really wanted to see where I could go. I got a new co—I got a coach. I haven't had many coaches in my life. 
just wasn't that many in case they didn't available. So my coach is, is Cape Town based or Stellenbosch. Um, and then we've just been going from there and I've been loving the journey. I really love the way my path's gone and having children and now running. they my biggest fans and I, I just run to make my children proud and to show them what, what sport can do to your life and how it can make you friends, take you places and open so many doors. Yeah. And uh, I mean, very quickly, you've had a, a very successful um, career in, in running. In 2014, you went to the IAAF World Half Marathon Champs in Copenhagen. Uh, you ran a great time there. Uh, 2017, you came second uh, at the Two Oceans. You went to the World Champs. So you've represented your country very quickly. Um, I mean, they must be incredibly proud of you, and you must be incredibly proud of yourself as well. Yeah, do you know what I am? I'm very proud of, of what I've done so far. Um, I remember sitting in a friend of mine's bedroom when we were in matric, and she was she played my hockey team. She was a South African hockey player, and on her on her cupboard she had Olympics, and she had her dreams written on her cupboard. And I remember looking at it, going, "Wow, that that, that that's brave." Um, I never had my dreams like written out there, but I always had them in my heart. And to represent South Africa was one of my massive, one of my biggest dreams. I wasn't sure if I believed I'd actually get there or, or yeah. if I'd do it. But yeah, to be able to have represented South Africa is something I can't even explain. It's really, really an honor. Yeah, I think for every athlete that has represented their country in whatever field, um, it is something that they'll remember for the rest of their lives. Um, 2021 Olympics? Is it yeah. <laughs> Things have changed a bit now. Um, when um, we first had Olympic trials a couple of years ago, it used to be a 2.42 marathon, and then it changed to a 2.37, and I did qualify for that Olympics. Um, then I had to have knee surgery, so didn't get an opportunity to go. Um, so this year, they changed it to a 2.29.30 marathon, which is a massive jump. It, it was huge, huge, and and there's not many South African athletes that can actually run that time. So this year I had kind of ruled it out and thought, you know what, I'm not going to run a 2:29 right now. I've got not enough time to prepare for that. So let me focus on something that I'm very passionate about now: the ultras, um, and I'm absolutely loving. But now that they've changed the the date, it, it's a you know year's time now. It's changed a few things, so yeah, I, I'm not going to rule it out. Um, I'll give it a good go, and if I can get there, if I can run close to the time or on the time, I don't know if I can, but let's put it this way, I'm not ruling it out. Oh, excellent, and uh, we, we hope that we'll be able to see you uh, representing your country out there um, Thank you. next year. Thanks. Um, and... Jenna, running is, it's a bit different from a lot of other sports um, where, I mean, I ran the Comrades this year or last year and the year before. And for me as an athlete, a lot of finishing an event like that is about 60, 70% in your, in your head. Um, as a professional that running at uh, ridiculous times of three and a half, four minutes, okay, is it the same for you? Um, in terms of that mental strength that you have to have to get through it, um, because you've obviously got such a huge base of fitness as well? I think it's always a, a mental thing as well, and comrades definitely is a very, very long way. Your body isn't conditioned to run that long. But I think it's it's more structured with us because we do condition our body a lot, and we do condition our body for the races that we want to do. So although it's definitely a big percentage is a mental game, it's a lot to do with conditioning and um, holding back and trusting your process, trusting your race day plan. Um, but definitely the end, like for my comrades, uh, that we said you'd hit that wall at 60 Ks and I got to 60. I was like, oh, this is, well, where's the wall? Um, and yeah. it was absolutely fun. I loved every second of it being my first experience. It was just something out of this world. But Three Ks to go, oh my word, I hit that wall. It came a bit later, but then it became a mental game for sure. Then you've just got to yeah, tap into that mental side. But yeah, I think it's a mental, it's definitely a mental thing for, for everyone. There's a big part mentally, but I do think that we are, the elite athletes are more conditioned to it. We put in way more time. We have more time being in our careers. 
um, we have time to put into it and we do obviously to be competitive. Whereas there's so many people who do probably a quarter of the training that we do and they go and finish the comrades. And while wow, that's amazing, they are my heroes. Anyone that does the comrades is a hero in my eyes. But um, their body will take a little bit more pounding and they will need to tap into their, their mental side, I guess, a bit more. And I mean, for us normal athletes that are doing the seven hours, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 hours, even whoever finishes is, is brilliant. Um, we obviously factor in quite a bit of walking into our race. Um, we actually train to walk. So on our, tra on our longer training runs, we'll actually walk sections to actually build our bodies like that. Are you guys the same? Um, obviously, there are times where you do walk in, in a race like the Comrades, but do you actually train for it? There are athletes that train for it. Most of us don't. Um, the only athlete I've known that trains for it was Caroline Vossman, um, the winner of the Comrades a couple of years ago. Um, and she actually used to train and walk, but she would walk fast and then she would sprint again <laughs> pretty much looked like it but but no um i don't and i know most of us don't train to walk and we don't schedule in walks during the comrades if a walk comes it's because we we need it um but generally though you, you hope not to walk so <laughs> um different strokes for different folks i guess yeah yeah and um jenna the south african women's category is or i mean, the entire women's category is, is really taken a step up uh, in recent times. But amazing or and fantastic to see is the quality of the South African ladies that are racing. Uh, obviously, Gerda had an unbelievable result this year, but there's yourself, there's Anne Ashworth, there's Caroline. The, the field just of South African women before we even looked at the Russian or the Chinese or whatever, is it's, it's fantastic to see. Oh, yeah, the, the women's running definitely stepped up. I think it's absolutely amazing to see. It's incredible to raise strong women um, and to lift each other up and push each other so that we can run better times and, um, and do better and fight for those positions. It's really, really awesome. It makes me so happy to see the South African women stepping up, especially in the ultras. The ultras seem to be where they really are stepping up. Um, Gerda is just in a class of her own right now um and yeah caroline was i think caroline bosman was the one who actually um ignited female running in south africa and she gave it hope and we've all aspired to be a lot like caroline was um and it's pushed us to places that we possibly never thought we could go and is there a, a bond between um the south african uh, female athletes i mean it's still a very it's an individual sport but are, are you close or is there that rivalry? Um, <laughs> what's the relationship between um, the top runners? And you can be perfectly blunt if you all can't stand each other. <laughs> no, it's not that we all can't stand each other. We very we fine off the line. It's kind of like I always tell my kids, on the line race, off the line friends. Um, and we, we, obviously you've got to understand that uh, women are different to men. For some reason, um, women are very competitive. Not that the men aren't, but and friendships. I don't think it's. I don't think every every elite female athlete will ever be best friends. Um, mm -hmm. We friends off the line, but it's kind of like I wouldn't go. We wouldn't go for coffee together or for lunch together, but we friends if we're in the same environment. Um, on the race line, we race. Afterwards, we chat. Um, there are a couple that don't, um, and they kind of a bit ostracized. But other than that, we pretty we we fine. We decent to each other. We nice to each other, but we by no means best friends. And sometimes I struggle with it because I see a lot of the Kenyans and sort of international overseas athletes who train together and race together, and they push each other and they work together. And sometimes I think like wow, why can't we do that? Because if we did, like on the line, race, but um, use each other to push each other. Uh, for example, I went to an international marathon um, in December, Valencia Marathon, and there was a couple of South Africans there. And I was like, look, it was kind of, um, could have been trials. They could have been used for their trials. But I said, like, what are your times, girls? Like, yeah, it doesn't matter. We're not coming top. We're not going for first, second, third position. We're we out, of, out, of, out of our depth. So let's, Maybe let's work together and let's 
like whether we come 15th, 16th, 17th, or and just push each other and get the same times. But they weren't interested um, for obviously reasons of their own. But it was just a prime example to me that South African women don't like to work together. They like to run on their own. It's almost like they they must keep their 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 training or their racing close to their hearts in case someone steals a secret of theirs or something, which I think is is silly. And when one person does it, it start, it's a domino effect, and then everyone becomes cagey and doesn't want to share and doesn't want to help. So it is something that South African women, um, I don't believe, do. They don't they don't like to share. They don't like to um, bring raise each other up to do better in a way. It, they, it's almost like they feel like their their limelight or their sponsor or their something is going to be stolen if you do better than them. And I think it's a natural thing with competition, but I see it more with the females. I don't see it with the men. Yeah, which is a pity, really, because it could make those Olympic qualifying times more attainable if the top South African women were working together. Yeah, it could, and I absolutely think it would if we could just get over ourselves and train hard together. I mean, look, it's hard to exactly talk because some of us live in Joburg, some of us live in KZN, um, so we do live distances apart. But where you do live in the same places, yeah, to build each other up and train would help. It definitely would help because then you, you'll you push yourself. At the moment, everyone just keeps to themselves and you only find out what they're doing on race day. And the same goes for when you're injured. Um, mm-hmm. In 2018, I had a, st- a tibial stress fracture, a huge stress fracture. You couldn't get bigger than mine. <laughs> and... Um, I, like no one offered me support, not one single person. Like these, so most of the elites have had stress fractures, but not one person sent me a message yeah. to say, "Listen, I've had it. I've been there. This is what I did. Um, you'll get over it." Nothing like that. Um, so the minute I hear anyone's got a stress fracture, I'm the first one to send them a message and ask how they're doing and offer some help because I think, like, just to get out there a bit more. Like, it just mm. off, like if someone had offered me a bit of help, I wouldn't have felt so like stranded and alone. No one shares anything, and it's quite sad that. And it would actually, I think, help the sport in terms of building it um, for girls coming up to want to do it more because, you know, there's so many team sports on offer and, and girls are expanding into soccer and cricket and rugby and, and all these other teams away from just your normal uh, netball and hockey. That's it does become very lonely in terms of um, being a sport as as a whole, really. It does. And I think um, I think it's more because it's so cutthroat out there. It's really hard for us to get sponsors. It's hard for us to, um, especially financial sponsors. Um, so the girls or, or people are so scared of, of losing the little bit that they've managed to get together and build up that they too scared to help anyone because it might be taken away or they might lose it. That's kind of what I feel like mm-hmm. it is. I feel like the, the woman would like to help each other and we would do well helping each other. Um, we, we, but it's, it's fear of losing what you, the bit that you have. Um, and it is, it's really cutthroat out there. People will give you, it's hard to even get products. But they will give you products, but no one will offer financial help. Um, and I think it, it all stems from that, to be honest. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think the sponsorship industry in South Africa needs a, a big uh, revisit in terms of uh, our individual athletes and and the support thereof. Um, Jenna, what's um, future hold for for you? What is your what are your ambitions and and what are your your hopes and and dreams for the next few years? Um, do you know what? I'd love to put that green and gold kit on again. I'd love to represent South Africa, be it Olympics, huge stream, uh, or world champs again. I went to world champs, um, to world athletics champs in 2017 in London, and, w- and it was the experience of a lifetime. To be in the same hotel, eating breakfast with Usain Bolt and Mo Farah, um, cast in the same team as Carter Semenya and Wade Faniko, Kakani Subani. It's just out of this world. It blew my mind. It was the the most incredible experience. So if I could go to that again, would would be amazing. Um, also on the ultra front, I definitely am hunting those podiums for um, two oceans again, and then for comrades. And yeah, with a bit of luck, one day hopefully I get a win for the comrades. That would be the ultimate dream too. Oh, absolutely, and let's hold thumbs for that. Um, and Jenna, if you had to give advice to a, a young girl, and I'm going to specifically. Um, focus on young girls just based on on the conversation we've had now 
Um, what advice would you give to a young girl that's looking at a possible career as a as a professional athlete, as a, a professional ultra endurance runner? Um, because it isn't an easy sport to do. It's a, it takes a, a very strong mind, and um, you know that it's it's hard to to get to the top where where you are. Um, firstly, I would I would ask them if they love it, if they are passionate about the sport. They need to love the sport. They need to be passionate about it because it's hard. It's not easy. It brings a lot of rewards. It's amazing. But your head has to be in the game. You have to want to do it. You have you can't be doing it for mom or dad who are living their sport through you. You have to want to do it. And if you're passionate about it, you will push your body when times get tough. I mean, there's things like injuries um, and obstacles to overcome. And you need the mind to be strong to it. You can and you will if you want to. Um, where there's a will, there's a way. I always say um, no matter what you have to do, to get to the top, you can get to the top if you want to. If you want to dream big, then you dream big, as, as big as you want to dream, um, and you can get there. There's a saying that says the difference between an obstacle and an opportunity is your attitude towards it, um, and it's so true. Nothing is an obstacle if your attitude towards it um, is to get over it or get around it or get to the top. I mean, I, I, I'm sad that I never had the self-belief to say, to write on my cupboard and say, I will go to the Olympics or I will represent South Africa or I will. Um, mm. I kept it in my heart. But I think more girls must believe in themselves or more athletes must believe in themselves because there's no limit to your success or no limit to how high you can go if you believe in yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you actually couldn't say a true word, to be honest. Jenna, thank you for joining us today on Sport SA Daily Diary. It's been fantastic to chat to you and and really great insight and and it's been a great conversation thank you yeah thanks so much for having me i've really enjoyed it good luck with the yeah. comrades training <laughs> thank you very much and to you and uh, let's hope we see you in the green and gold ne next year in 2021 thank you that'd be amazing <laughs> join us again tomorrow on sport sa daily diaries we will be chained to ex-bafana bafana linchpin matthew booth